Greetings and warm welcome to Scadia.com. So today, we will be talking about a metabolic map of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, especially glucose, is the major form of energy inside the body. But glucose is not taken up inside the body directly. Instead, it follows several pathways and several mechanisms to reach the final product, which is the production of ATP. ATP is the major source of energy for the whole body. So today, we will hover over all the metabolic map of carbohydrates. Starting off with glycolysis. Glycolysis is a 10-step process in which glucose is converted into pyruvate molecule. There is generation of 2 ATP in this process. Now, Glucose converts itself into glucose 6-phosphate and from there it converts into fructose 6-phosphate. Fructose 6-phosphate give rise to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and that makes two compounds that are glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. However, dihydroxyacetone phosphate does not take part in glycolysis. Instead, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate make 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, then phosphoglycerate, then 2-phosphoglycerate, then phosphoenol pyruvate, and lastly, pyruvate molecule is generated. Now, whole of this process is going on in the cytosol. After generation of pyruvate molecule, it is converted into acetyl coenzyme A. From here, the step undergo Krebs cycle and this occurs in the mitochondria. Now Krebs cycles involve several steps from which ATP molecule is generated. Acetyl coenzyme converts itself into citrate, then isocitrate, then alpha ketoglutarate, then succinyl coenzyme A, then succinate, fumarate, malate, and lastly oxaloacetate. This process also yields ATP, basically 12 in number. Now, there are three steps in glycolysis that are reversible. And we need pyruvate molecule to convert itself into glucose as well. So for that, the pathway that it's going to follow is gluconeogenesis, in which the pyruvate molecule is converted back to glucose molecule. So. There is another pathway that is generated from glucose 6-phosphate and it is known as pentose phosphate pathway. And this is used for the generation of ribose sugar and NADPH molecules. What happens is glucose 6-phosphate converts itself into 6-phosphogluconolactone and from that it converts into 6-phosphogluconate. From that, series of reaction takes place from ribulose 5-phosphate that ultimately lead to the production of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and pseudoheptulose 7-phosphate. Now both of these enzymes undergo changes and become fructose 6-phosphate and erythrose 4-phosphate. And from that, with the action of xylulose 5-phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate has been made. And both of them aid in glycolysis. So you see, these pathways are interconnected with each other. So now, this glucose 6-phosphate is interconvertible into glucose 1-phosphate that can also lead to formation of glycogen. Glycogen is a form of storage of glucose inside our body. Now, there is involvement of UDP glucose and from that glycogen is made and the process is known as glycogenesis. Well, if the process is reversible, then it is known as glycogenolysis, which means glycogen is broken down into glucose. While if there is production of glucose to glycogen, then the process is known as glycogenesis which means production of glycogen. Now, after all these metabolic pathways, what happens is that ultimately we need to produce ATP. So, from Krebs cycle, there is generation of FADH2 and NADH molecules. 
that further go into electron transport chain and generate ATP molecule. So you can see that all of these mechanisms are somehow interrelated to each other. One molecule gives rise to the formation of other molecule and ultimately glucose is stored in the form of energy which is known as ATP. So that was all about the metabolic map. In the next section, we will be learning about the transfer of glucose from tissues to other organs.